As we discussed in our video introducing the binder, there isn't much difference between what you can do with a folder and a text document in Scrivener. You typically store documents inside of folders, but it's also possible to have subdocuments for a text document, which is essentially the same thing. You can also have the folder itself contain text while still acting as a folder, so the main difference between the two is really just how they open by default in the editor, and having a different icon. Binder icons can actually tell you a lot about a folder or a text document. When you create a new document in Scrivener, you'll notice that the icon in the binder is blank, to indicate there is no text in the document yet. If we type something in the editor, this icon changes to show a document with text, so you'll know that this document has been started. If you don't type any text, but you open the inspector and enter a synopsis, the icon becomes an index card, to indicate it has a synopsis but no text. Once you start writing in the editor, the icon will once again revert to a text document. If you take a snapshot of this document, the page icon will get an earmark curl, as though the corner of the document has been folded down. This allows you to easily see whether a document in your binder has snapshots associated with it. We'll explore snapshots in more detail in another video. Now, if we drag other documents into this one, so they become subdocuments, the icon changes to a stack of documents to indicate that it's acting as a container. If you prefer a more traditional system of organisation, you can create a folder. But as we discussed earlier, there isn't really anything special about folders in Scrivener. A folder is just a text document with a different icon and slightly different default behaviours. In fact, you can convert a folder into a text document and back again using the Documents Convert menu, or by control clicking and choosing the option from the pop-up menu. You can even select a group of documents and go to Document, New Folder from Selection to group documents together. All this allows the structure of your project to be more flexible. You don't have to think about how you want to organise things in advance, just dive right in and you can change things as your project grows. Folder icons will also change based on their contents. Once again, if we create a new folder, open the inspector and add a synopsis, an index card appears in the bottom right corner of the folder icon. If we switch to single document view and type some text in the folder itself, a text icon appears. In addition, you can duplicate any item in your binder, whether it's a document or a folder, with subdocuments or without. I'll select this document stack and open Documents Duplicate from the menu. This presents us with two different options. Choosing Duplicate without subdocuments just clones the top document in the stack with exactly the same document title and places it directly after the original document in your binder. Alternatively, choosing Duplicate with subdocuments and unique title reproduces every document in this stack and gives the top document a numerical suffix so it can be easily distinguished from the original. Just so we're clear, these options work on any file in the binder, not just those with subdocuments. You can duplicate a single document the same way, with or without a unique title. That's all we're going to cover in this video. If you want to learn more about the features of Scrivener, our other videos should be linked nearby. Thanks for watching, and happy writing!